Well, hiya, folks. I know that um, all these technical issues, you're just not getting Goji Go. I'm actually going insane trying to figure out what was going on. I finally got everything fixed. My computer's finally back together again. And I got a package. Let's see what's inside. <gasps> what? Go Jayco t-shirts that nobody wants? I'm just messing. If you are uh, interested and want to get yourself a t-shirt, we're going to be figuring out something whether we do a giveaway or something like that. But something, the most special thing in this box is this. Look at that. Now, I'm not truly one for baseball caps. It's fully like embroidered on there. It's really cool. It's got a really nice elastic. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't think I'm gonna wear this. We're gonna do like a special giveaway or something. Uh, especially maybe something to celebrate the fact that I'm almost done. I'm so close. So today, it's a very important day for me personally. If you don't know what TIFF is, it's one of the biggest film festivals in the entire world, certainly one of the most important. It's where a ton of great movies are premiered, the first time people get to see what these artists have created, and the first time that the world can decide what they think about it. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. But I've never gone. Well today, that changes. So I've got a buddy named Max. This is Max. Thank you, Max. Max, you're the best. Thank you, Max. And this year, he is working at the Toronto International Film Festival. He's working there, and he's got me some loner tickets to go see some movies, including one today that is part of its world premiere. It's a movie called Their Finest. Yeah, so in honor of TIFF, I want to talk to you a little bit today about what my favorite movies are. I'm going to be talking about my top 10 movies this week. Right. But if you do like movies, get, be, get and be a part of TIFF, even if you just go and line up on the red carpet. If you do that, you might be in TIFF's trailer for next year, like Luke was, and Jess, his fiance. We love movies. And we love we the live city. and breathe movies. <laughs> <laughs> so go, be a part of it, it's amazing. Also, Max saw Leonardo DiCaprio, check that out. Jelly much? in about an hour and I realized that I'm an idiot because I have all my camera equipment with me and there's no way they're gonna let me inside a world premiere showing of their finest with my camera equipment so caught a few Pokemon gonna head back oh drop my camera off at home and then go see a movie Tiff is over. I've had a chance to process the whole experience and the movies that I got to see, and uh, I want to show you what I thought. Here are all the movies I got to see at Tiff. I got to see Their Finest. <sighs> got to see Bleed for This. I got to see the documentary by Morgan Spurlock, Rats. I got to see, uh, what was the next one I saw? 
I got to see Brian Cranston and Jennifer Garner in Wakefield. I got to see Burn Your Maps with Lil Jacob T, the kid from Room. He was delightful, it was wonderful. I got to see Una starring Rooney Mara and Ben Mendelsohn. Very heavy, but very well done. I got to see Amy Adams and Jeremy Renner and Forrest Whitaker in Arrival, my personal favorite of the entire week. Incredible movie, it'll be in my top 10 movies of the year, guaranteed. It's a, it's a shoe in And finally, I got to see LBJ starring Woody Harrelson. I need to talk briefly about what TIFF was as an experience. When you see a movie at TIFF, even if the movie is just fine, even if it's just whatever, you're seeing it with an audience that wants to see that movie so bad that they waited in line or paid a bunch of money for a ticket or they're excited to be a part of the festival. Energy is higher than, I've, than at any movie I've ever been. I've seen midnight screenings with crazy fans. I've, I've stood in those lines before, but never have I seen something like at TIFF. It's J.K. Simmons. Where even the commercials before the movie, people are yelling out stuff. They're so involved, they're so into it. Clapping and laughing throughout the movie at every single point where they're supposed to as an audience. Oh, sorry. The experience is unlike anything I've had. And I have yet to go see a movie back in like a regular movie theater since TIFF, but I know that when I do, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a bummer. <laughs> it's gonna be a bummer. Being able to see some movie stars, being able to see some filmmakers, being able to see and hear their stories about the process of making these movies is so inspiring. It gave me so much just like, excitement for the future and for other projects that I wanna do and be a part of. While I have this fun dramatic lighting, Let's talk about my favorite movies. Uh, this is a subject I'll talk about with anybody for any reason, and it's about time it made it into Go Jake Go. Number 10. A favorite of mine for a very, very long time. It's one of my favorite movies to show people and share with people, and it's 12 Angry Men. 12 Angry Men is literally about 12 angry guys in a room discussing a court case. They are the jury, and they have to decide whether or not this young man is going to the electric chair. So the stakes are very high. It's amazing because it's a movie about persuasion, it's a movie about doubt, it's a movie about your conscience, it's a movie about where you're coming from and how that affects the important decisions that you make in your life. And it's super cool and you should totally check it out. Number nine. Uh, number nine has been long hailed by the American Film Institution and by many critics and film historians as the greatest film ever made, and that is Citizen Kane. It is about a man, it is about his myth and his legend and how his story is told by the people closest to him and how people interpret what this man's life was, his huge accomplishments, the ton of money and political success the man had, as well as his failures and how the world perceives that. It's amazing, it's brilliant, there's amazing stories behind how this movie was made and you should watch it. It's black and white. Deal with it. Number eight. My number eight is a very intense, crazy movie, and it's Apocalypse Now. It takes place in the Vietnam War, but it's not about the Vietnam War. It's about evil. And so it gets pretty dark and intense. What I can say about this movie is that it takes place in Vietnam on a boat going down a river trying to find Colonel Kurtz, a man who our heroes, they're not heroes, who our main characters have been told to assassinate. And you should check it out. Number seven. I look at this trilogy as a single movie. They all come together to tell one large story and it was, it's to be digested as one story. I've watched these movies back to back many times, a ton when I was a kid. It's hugely influential in my life, but it also holds up as one of the greatest film trilogies of all time, and that is the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Yeah. Most of you know how great it is. Number six. My number six is a really difficult film, but it's a very important film, and it will go down as history as probably the greatest film about the Holocaust, and it's Schindler's List. It's weird calling a movie like this a favorite movie, but genuinely, it's 
It's one of the best things I've ever seen in my life. And the times that I've watched it, and it is multiple times, many people can't do that, but the multiple times I've watched it, every time I see something brand new and incredible, not only about the performances and the story, but especially with this movie, about its impact. And then when you get past that and look at the craft of how well Steven Spielberg has made this movie, that puts it in a whole other category, and that's why it's on my list. Number five. This next movie is a bit of a controversial choice, perhaps. <laughs> I don't know. I think this is this is a movie that at any time, no matter what, I can watch it and just love it and just dive in and have a, a great old time. It's a movie that's about fathers and sons, it's about ambition, it's about our history and where we come from, and it's Gangs of New York. Martin Scorsese is my favorite director, and with a cast like Leonardo DiCaprio and Daniel Day-Lewis and Liam Neeson, just to like scratch the tip of the iceberg of talent involved in this movie, this movie also contains my favorite performance I think ever, and that's Daniel Day-Lewis as Bill the Butcher. It's three hours of just glorious number four. This is the Godfather. I don't know. I'm most, for most people, this is the greatest movie ever made. For me, it's my number four. But again, like these top few movies, they could all like interchange just by those varying tiny little degrees based on maybe how I'm feeling that day. This movie is historic. It was, it's, it's the best in the genre. I love it. 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 I love. I love the Godfather. Also incredibly quotable. Number three is a movie that from the day that I saw it, I knew that I absolutely loved it, and I've watched it multiple, multiple times, even in theaters during a special re-release, and I was glued to my seat. I love this movie. It's Lawrence of Arabia. Again, sometimes people with these old movies, they go, oh, man, you have to watch it and just see what's going on. It's amazing, Lawrence of Arabia. Epic masterpiece, and one of my all-time favorite movies. Number two. Four that my number one and my number two have intersected and changed multiple times. But my number two is probably the most emotional movie on the list. It's definitely the one that strikes the heart's string that, huh? It plays my heartstrings just with no mercy, no matter. There's like a thousand scenes in this movie that for some reason I just cry and cry and cry. But it's beautiful, it's wonderful, and it has one of the happiest endings of any movie ever, and it's a wonderful life. It is, it's a wonderful life. Look, it, you love that movie and it's in black and white. Stop being such a snob. And number one, now. My number one movie is The Departed. I just love it, I love it. I love it so much. Yeah, that's it. <laughs>